consideration provided by... Research shows people remember ads with a catchy song. So to help you remember that Liberty Mutual customizes your home insurance, here's a little number you'll never forget. Did you know that Liberty Mutual... Liberty Mutual! Only pay for what you need. Only pay for what you need. They're just going to live in there? Yeah. Only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 liberty. Tomorrow on E.T., one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Hart inside his TV hustle and his prank show with Nick Cannon. The level of fear that that put in so many and so many men. Yes. Yes. Plus, happening now. Several spring breakers visiting the zoo, now visiting the hospital after this chunk of tree fell and hit them. It came from right up here. One of those in the hospital is in critical condition. We'll hear reaction from the zoo coming up next. San Antonio families evacuated from their apartments after fire broke out. One mother shares the terrifying moments her family experienced. Tomorrow night, the weather changes with the arrival of storms. I'm tracking when those storms will be in your neighborhood, and we'll talk about the coldest air we've seen since mid-February. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, the San Antonio Zoo, the scene of an accident after part of a tree snaps and falls right onto unsuspecting visitors. Yeah, really scary stuff. We're told that seven people got hurt, one of them critically. Our Jonathan Cotto now joins us live from the zoo. So, Jonathan, how are these people doing? Zephania, that's an excellent question. In fact, we're just hearing from San Antonio Fire Department that they took about seven people to the hospital, only one of them with a sense of urgency. The other six were only taken to the hospital as a precaution. But we can take a look at what that scene looked like earlier this afternoon at the San Antonio Zoo. These video images captured by Sky 12, you can see just how substantial in size the branch of this tree is that fell over the pathway inside the zoo. We are learning that this is in an area called the Birds of the World here at the San Antonio Zoo. Now, we spoke to the Vice President of Marketing, Hope Roth. This is what she had to say. It all happened very quickly, and our security EMS team here at the zoo, they're amazing. And they were responded right away. We actually had our safety director right near um, when the tree branch cracked and fell. And so the guests were immediately taken care of. She also says because it's spring break, the zoo was fully staffed or is fully staffed, so they were able to immediately respond to those who needed assistance at the time. As you can see, operations here at the zoo have not stopped, and as the green sign behind me reads, yes, they are still open. This is a story that we're going to continue to follow and update you as more information is made available, especially on the status of those that were taken to the hospital this afternoon. Back to you in the studio, David Estefania. And thank you. Now, when we tell you that there was a big fire this morning, this is exactly what we mean. We're talking about more than 30 units from the San Antonio Fire Department. They fought a fire at a northwest side apartment complex, and now many of the people who live there have to find somewhere else to live. Tiffany Ware just actually spoke to a family member whose loved ones were inside one of those apartments when that fire broke out. Yeah, that's all that matters to me is that they're okay material can be replaced. Paula Austin's son and his family evacuated their apartment in the 5800 block of Northwest Loop 410 this morning. He said he was in the restroom. There was like a spark, like something like the light went out and all he knew next was he smelled smoke. He said he woke up his wife and uh, told her go get our daughter and get get out of the apartment. Joe Arrington with the San Antonio Fire Department says the fire seems to have started between the first and second floor. A lot of times you see things like that. It's um, it points, obviously accidental. You know, it's um, that's what they're looking at is determining the exact cause. Was their work being done? Was had their work been recently done? With firefighters extinguished the flames before noon and began checking for hot spots. Six units had severe fire and water damage. Residents are being relocated to other apartments or other properties. They're going to offer them another apartment for now um, and we'll do whatever we can to get them what they need. Arrington says no one was injured. The cause of the fire is under investigation. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News.
After last month's deadly dog attack stemming from a well-known nuisance home, the city wants to start a new program to tackle nuisance neighbors. City staff working on a new program modeled after the existing Dangerous Assessment Response Team, or DART. It already tackles the worst of the worst nuisance properties. The home on Devil Street, where the dogs were from, had reportedly been the subject of more than 800 911 calls and dozens of 311 calls in the last three years. However, a city spokeswoman told KSAT that the types of calls weren't severe enough to require DART. The new program would focus on homes with a number of calls, even if they are low priority. However, it's not clear how it would tackle them. Coming up at 6, we'll talk about other steps the city is taking to beef up the enforcement for aggressive dogs. If you are looking forward to a bright, sunny and warm spring break this week, doesn't look like that's going to happen. Cold front on the way, and it's going to feel like winter all over again. OK, but you probably guessed that already. You know, mm -hmm. the overcast skies, kind of a clue that things are set to change. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey joins us. So all right, Sarah, here's the question. When are people going to need to whip out their coats? By Friday morning. OK. Friday morning is the time when it will be cold outside. But we've got some storms to deal with before then, too. First, though, I want to talk about it, it was a decent day out there. I hope you were able to really soak up the nicer weather, even though it's a little cloudy out there because things are going to change. It was 67 in Bernie and outside right now you can really see that those clouds have moved in as Stephanie was talking about 71. It's breezy. We've got winds from the southeast at 13 miles per hour. Enjoy the evening because again things are going to change tomorrow night. Tonight we'll be looking at temperatures falling to the mid 60s. It'll be cloudy, breezy, a sprinkle or two. But here's what's up with the weather. What we need to talk about. Severe storms are going to be around the area Thursday night as a cold front moves through. That's going to set up that big temperature drop by Friday morning and it will be windy. Then finally, we're going to be in an extended period of colder weather lasting through the weekend. Details on when the those storms will be near San Antonio, how chilly it'll be on Friday morning, and how long that cold will last coming up in just a bit. All right, Sarah, thank you. Now, switching gears for a bit, you know, it's always awful whenever a car crashes into a trailer and a woman, an eight-year-old girl, are lucky that they survived that kind of impact. So this happened just outside the town of Lytle around 11 o'clock this morning. Bear County Sheriff's deputies say that a 29-year-old woman rear-ended a trailer on Wisdom Road just north of Greenwood Road near Old Frio City Road. And that crash was so powerful that it crushed the front of the car. The woman and the eight year old girl both got hurt. The woman is dealing with serious injuries. In fact, she had to be airlifted to SAMC. As for the little girl, she was taken to University Hospital by ambulance. Deputies say the driver of the other vehicle involved in this was not hurt. We just heard Sarah and how the weather is impacting us here in San Antonio. Well, the weather is a developing story across the entire U.S. More severe weather impacting parts of the country with less than a week until the first day of spring. Much of the Northeast digging out from the biggest snowstorm they've seen this winter. Yeah, and out in the West, another atmospheric river is bringing more rain to the region. ABC's Melissa Adon reports along the Los Angeles River in Los Angeles. Mudslides prompting evacuations across California. Cal Fire responding to this in the outskirts of Sacramento. San Francisco seeing strong Category 1 hurricane force winds that shattered windows and left nearly 200,000 customers without power. The strong winds coupled with the already saturated ground brought trees down across the state. Across the country, millions of Americans dealing with all kinds of severe weather. More than a foot of snow fell in Duluth, Minnesota over the weekend. The weight of all that snow caused the roof of this mall to collapse. Fortunately, there were no injuries. The Northeast, which has had a relative mild winter, was hammered by this latest storm right before spring begins. Residents from Pennsylvania to Massachusetts are now digging out. Some areas seeing approximately three feet of snow. I, I knew it was going to snow, but I didn't know it was going to be this much. This is like ridiculous. Thousands of customers without power. The heavy wet snow bringing down power lines and trees. Look at that. Completely over the interstate. While conditions are expected to clear up here in Los Angeles, the concern remains that yet another atmospheric river is expected to form in the coming days. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
And now to the ripple effect of those endless extreme weather on the West Coast. The impact ongoing devastating storms in California could trickle right down to the prices at our grocery stores here. And the reason why is because California is the leading agriculture producer in the U.S. and many of the state's key growing areas are flooded. So that's delaying the harvesting of essential crops. CNN's Shelley Malaski has a look at how the disaster is affecting crop production. A devastating blow to our nation's top crop producer. The recent back-to-back -back storms hitting California's critical agriculture regions may also impact the U.S. food supply. The pain is going to be prolonged for many weeks uh, and months. This should have been the beginning of the harvest season. The relentless rain is flooding crops, evacuating farm worker communities and delaying the harvest season. California is the golden state of food production. It produces the majority of some specialty crops, like certain fruits and vegetables in the country. In January's uh, storm events, we had over 15,000 acres that were impacted by flooding and inundation with over $330 million worth of farm losses. Ag officials in hard hit Monterey County say it's unclear when planting schedules will resume and all the flooded farms and delayed harvest could lead to higher costs for consumers nationwide. That's if supplies tighten and produce distributors turn to Mexico or other regions to make up for shortages and then pass on the added costs to consumers. Ag officials say it's too early to fully assess the damage, but are working to mitigate the long-term impact. There will be more crop losses as areas that have not experienced flooding now are now experiencing it for the first time. In Monterey County, the severe weather has forced farm workers out of their homes and left them without jobs. This community of Pajaro is mostly low income Latino farm workers, and this is the worst thing that could have happened to them right now. For Consumer Watch, I'm Shelley Malashi. Take you outside with Trans Guide. Thought it wasn't going to be that bad during rush hour this week because of spring yeah. break. But, oops. Think again. <laughs> 35 and 410. That's usual, isn't it? Right, yeah. Lots of traffic there heading up north. Southbound lanes look pretty nice, though. So, yeah. yeah. Just if you thought you were going to get lucky to spring break, not so much. All right. We still have a lot more coming up during this half hour. Still ahead, top federal aviation officials laying it all on the table to make sure that air travel in the U.S. is safe for everyone. What they're admitting to and what they say is going to take to keep all of us safe on the ground and also up in the air. That's coming up. Here is what we are working on for KSAT 12 News at 6. A local woman is fighting for change after her sister was murdered. Coming up, why she wants to see more safeguards put in place for convenience store employees and what response she's gotten from lawmakers. An animal tranquilizer is showing up in fentanyl across the country at alarming rates. Coming up at six, the scary side effects that lead to amputation. And the South by Southwest Music Festival underway in Austin. Coming up, our KSAC crew is there and they will introduce you to a local musician playing the International Festival. All that and more today on the news at six. So it's not just you. You've been noticing this more and more. There have been plenty of close calls involving passenger planes in recent months. And the Federal Aviation Administration admits, yes, there's been an uptick. So right now its members are meeting. And as ABC's Reen Roy reports, officials with the agency say they must work together to prevent something more catastrophic from happening. One close call after another involving commercial flights and now the FAA holding a summit to address safety concerns. We have seen an uptick in serious close calls that we must address together. The safety summit, along with the NTSB and other government agencies, investigating those recent aviation incidents, looking at patterns and risk factors as they hope to figure out how to prevent similar issues in the future. Initial information suggests that more mistakes than usual are happening across the system. One potential factor they're working to address is a staffing issue with 1,200 less air traffic controllers than a decade ago. There have been at least six mid-air scares and near misses in recent months, including this one at New York's JFK Airport, a Delta pilot forced to slam on the brakes after an American Airlines plane crossed the wrong runway. Delta 1943, cancel takeoff plans. Rejecting. These recent incidents must serve as a wake-up call before something more catastrophic occurs. 
Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg telling ABC we're on track to see more than 20 incidents this year alone. But officials stress that the aviation system is safe overall, citing the 45,000 flights that take off each day with zero fatal commercial plane crashes since 2009. The FAA says there are already new safety measures being put into place, including modernizing airport infrastructure and rolling out new technology for safer landings. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. All right, so let's take a live look outside right now. Ooh, talk about overcast, right? Super gray out there, 71 degrees. But if this is any indication, listen, calm right now. It's really tomorrow night. Right. right, Sarah, That's that we're exactly talking about right. changes. That's exactly right, Stephanie. Tomorrow night is when we're going to have some storms, some of which could be strong or severe, and then a very big drop in temperatures. Let me show you where that cold front is right now uh, across uh, the nation. It's currently working its way through the Rocky Mountains. You can see all the rain associated with this as well. So as you look at temperatures, too, it's, it's much colder behind this front. Temperatures even below freezing up in Cut Bank right now. Let's take you through the future cast. First, of all, tomorrow, again, for the most part, tomorrow is going to be fairly quiet. In the morning hours, we'll have a 30% chance for an isolated shower or two early in the morning. Again, this is a snapshot at 3 o'clock, uh, pardon me, 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. And then by the afternoon, we'll actually see some peaks of sunshine. So tomorrow is going to be a pretty quiet day. Again, 30% chance for some showers. And then by noon, we'll start to see the sun, 72 at noon, 80 for the high temperature, windy with the those winds from the south gusting up to 20, 25 miles per hour. During the day, it will be quiet, but tomorrow night, that's when we see things change. This is a snapshot at 7 o'clock tomorrow, and you can see some storms out near Dallas Fort Worth along this front. This front will make it to San Antonio by midnight. Now, notice that at 11 p.m. tomorrow, there is going to be a few storms for the hill country out west toward Del Rio. Everybody around San Antonio and up in the hill country is going to be at a scattered risk for severe weather Thursday night into Friday morning. The primary threats there would be wind gusts of up to 60 to 70 miles per hour. We're going to see a squall line move through, which is a very fast moving line of storms. There will also be the risk for some isolated hail up to the size of quarters. I could take you through the future cast here. This is a snapshot at 1 a.m. Friday morning. So Thursday night into Friday, you can see that it'll start to get a little thundery around San Antonio. While you're sleeping, you may hear some of that thunder. It may wake you up, may wake the pets up, may wake the kids up. F again, this is 3 a.m. on Friday, so while we're sleeping, we will be tracking this system as it moves through live on air if we need to be and live on the KSAT Weather Authority app. Some rain will continue into Friday morning as well, and then it gets cold. So the second impactful weather timeline that you need to know after the storms on Thursday night is the big temperature drop and the winds on Friday. What I'm showing you here is the temperature drop and the wind chill Friday morning. Wind chills will be in the 30s on Friday morning because we're going to have winds gusting from the north at about 40 miles per hour. Take some time today, tomorrow, to secure any kind of outdoor uh, lightweight patio furniture or, or things like that, because again, those winds will be gusting up to 40 miles per hour. And then finally, the last thing you need to know that's going to impact your weekend is that the cold is going to last through the weekend and into early next week as well. Here's how cold it's going to be. We're going to have temperatures in the 30s in the morning on Saturday and Sunday, upper 30s. Highs will only be in the 40s and 50s. Monday in particular, we're going to have cold rain scattered throughout the day. Technically, Monday is when spring starts, but highs are going to struggle to get out of the 40s. It's going to be 47 degrees. Finally, we're going to start to see some clearing Tuesday and Wednesday. Highs will be back into the 60s and 70s. But that's four days of cold weather. And coming up at six, we're going to talk a little bit about the rumor mill of a few snowflakes working into the hill country as well because of the cold. But notice we're all going to be above freezing. So no impacts because of ice. You won't need to protect those plants or anything like that. I'll just give you a little more details coming up at six. David Stephania. All right, Sarah, thank you. The Spurs were smoking hot from long range last night. They got to repeat that again tonight. It's those 
wanted back-to-backs. All right, so let's go to our friend Larry Ramirez. He is joining us live from the AT&T Center, where the Spurs are set to battle the Mavericks at 7.30 tonight. That is correct, and you know what? The Mavericks are hoping that the Spurs are not red hot from three-point distance like they were last night. The Spurs were so good, they set a franchise record for threes made in a single game, and in men's college basketball, the Islanders survived and advanced. Coming up. I feel like we get a lot of those looks, honestly, each game. Um, you know, make or miss league, honestly. So just glad we was able to make them today. Devin and the Spurs lit it up from three-point range last night on game day. Good evening, everybody, and welcome live to the AT&T Center, where the Spurs will host the Dallas Mavericks tonight, and the Mavs lead the regular season series two games to none. As Devin just said, it is a make-or-miss league, and the Spurs made a lot of shots last night. It was fun to watch. They sank a franchise record 22 threes to beat the Magic 132-114, to 114, scoring half of their points from downtown. Doug McDermott led SA with five threes off the bench. That was awesome. You know, the ball was moving all night long. Um, guys were getting the paint, finding the open man. And uh, that was our emphasis this morning at shoot around was to get in the paint um, because Orlando collapses. And we obviously took advantage of that. It was very fun. I mean, you know, as a team, we played really well. Uh, I feel like everyone showed up, um, not only offensively, but defensively, too. And uh, we had a bunch of runs and it was just fun, fun basketball. So it was real good. Here's the matchup. Tip is set for 7.30 tonight. Luca is out for Dallas with a left thigh strain. Devin, Jeremy, Zach, and Charles Bassey will not play for the Spurs. Turning to men's college basketball, Shaka's up. That's because the Islanders won their first four matchup last night in Dayton, Ohio. And I'll tell you what, it was a nail biter at the end. Texas A&M Corpus Christi held off Southeast Missouri State 75-71 in a first four matchup of 16 seeds. Wagner alum Jalen Jackson led the Islanders with a career high 22 points, including 14 free throws. Led by head coach Steve Lutz. The Islanders live to see another tournament game. I thought it was a great opening game for the NCAA tournament. I mean, you know, you had a, a, a lot of energy, a lot of effort. You had, um, you know, two teams that played extremely, extremely hard and uh, gave it everything they had. Um, at the end of the day, we made a few more free throws. We got a couple more rebounds. And obviously, we were able to come out, um, you know, on the on the victorious side. So uh, I couldn't be more excited for these guys, and I couldn't be more excited for our basketball program. The Islanders will next play the overall number one seed, Alabama Crimson Tide, tomorrow at 1.45 in the afternoon. And Bama is favored by 24 points. And coming up later on at 6, we'll hear from Islanders senior guard Jalen Jackson. Guys, back to you. All right, good luck against Alabama. And good luck to the Spurs tonight against the Mavs. Huh? Yep, yep. 7.30. All right, Larry, thank you. And we'll be right back after this. Other than a few morning showers, tomorrow is generally going to be a quiet day. It's not until tomorrow night that those storms move through, capable of damaging wind gusts and, yes, even some hail. There's about a 70% coverage of storms. Behind that front, it is going to be cold. Temperatures are going to struggle to get out of the 40s and 50s for four days in a row. We'll have some lingering morning rain on Friday with wind chills in the 30s, and then rain returns really to the forecast on Monday before we warm up. By the way, we will be live right to your phone if we need to be on the KSAT Weather Authority app. All you have to do, scan that QR code. It'll take you right to uh, where you can find the app. Make sure to allow notifications. We can always count on you whenever things go that way. All right, thank you so much, Sarah. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you here at 6. World News is next.